Hi guys, how are we all? Um, hopefully, hopefully we've all had a nice weekend. Um, so guys, this morning we have two things today we're going to try and tackle now in the next half an hour or so. Um, we have our English, I want to give a bit more advice on that. And the second one then is once we've finished that, we're going to... I'm going to help you get warmed up for the maths and discuss it a little. I think Josh and stuff has said he's found it difficult, okay? But the first thing we want to do is we want to try and want to give you some final tips on how to write the best story ever, okay? So um, some of us said mm, we're happy we've you've started flying on with work. That's super. Um, while other people you've wrote to me to say that you're not sure on what to write or anything like that. So today we're going to spend about 10, 10 minutes or so the very start and we're going to look at how to write um, your best ever story okay so all i'm going to do is share tips that i have stole from some of our famous authors such as jacqueline wilson um so this is going to be following their tips um it's better to take their tips than mine because they've had their work published and are awesome at what they do so this is coming from them not just me all righty um so with our stories guys um Someone asked is, do we just rewrite a story that we, we've already done this year? If you're really stuck for ideas, by all means, take a story you've already done, but make it much better, okay? I, um, I've seen some fantastic stories throughout this year, um, but I think every single person is much more capable of getting me an even better story that we can publish, okay? So although some of us done some excellent stories, I do reckon um, we're all capable of producing our best work yet, okay? Um, I'd be slightly concerned as well if in May you don't think you can write any better than you did in September or October. Um, so we should definitely be able to write a lot better now than we did at the start of sixth class, okay? So, uh, Jade, I mentioned yours because I've seen you put it up in Google Classroom. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to the ending, like, you're talking four weeks away, so you just sort of, when you're doing something like that, you would accept that this is the end of the time and there's not going to be too much change. You're not, you know, you're not writing too much. There's not going to be much happening in then four weeks that will change your story drastically. Okay, so you just, this is the end and this is how you pit it out. Um, but again, if you're writing about your time in Holy Family, don't make it like really factual, specific. Make it like a story or something that's easy to read and flow through, okay? Um, so, um, with regards to words and all that, all I said is you have up to two pages. So you have up to two pages, two A4 pages to, to use. Um, Within them, I wouldn't set your writing size any bigger than 14, okay? Don't use any bigger than 14 for your, your size of writing. Uh, any bigger than that, it looks, it, looks, it looks really sort of juniorish, okay? So keep it about 14. And remember our VCOP, VCOP, get our vocabulary, get connectives, get openers, get punctuation, loads of questions, bits of speech, all of that. Anyway, let's get flying on, right? So, number one, ideas. So, when it comes to writing your best of a story, ideas. So, um, ideas, where do we get them from? Everywhere. Here's the answer, everywhere. Okay, have you been out for walks? Have you gone for runs? Do you look out your window? Um, any people that you see, you can put a story to them or imagine a story to them, okay? Um, like, for example, I know Jacqueline Wilson once said that she was out with, um, she's out walking and she's seen a woman with two kids and the, the mum was like heavily tattooed and she sort of seen that as a picture and then straight away she started putting a story to it and then I think it became, um, uh, what was her book? Illustrated Mom or something. Illustrated Mom um, was that book. And I say it only came from just meeting a tattooed woman with two kids while she was shopping uh, for her groceries or something. Okay, so when it comes to ideas, it, have you seen a picture on Instagram? Have you seen a person walking down your street? Um, did you see something on a TV show? Did you like the character on a TV show? Okay, so our ideas, you take them for anywhere and anything 
Um, a dream you had last night. What was it? Could you, could you tweak it? Could you sort of uh, change it slightly? Any of those things um, are where you can get ideas. So even on Instagram, as I say, if you're on Instagram, there's loads of stuff, loads of visual cues come up on that every single time you log on to it. So again, have a look at it, let your imagination open up and see what you can manage to get, okay? So that's our ideas. Next up, characters. Where do we get ideas for characters? Well, again, this is kind of similar to ideas <clears throat> in the sense that uh, our characters can be based on people we know, people we've met, things we've heard, um, maybe loosely merging two things together. Do you see a character on TV and think, oh, that character is a bit like my brother? And then you can kind of merge the personalities of both, okay? But when it comes to this idea of characters, what I what is suggested in characters is you get a whole pile of background stuff for your characters. You might not use half the stuff, okay? Like in an ideal world, you won't even use half the stuff. But by by getting as much information on your characters as possible, you create a whole picture of them. So although you might not mention any of it, putting it down on paper might influence what you write about. Okay? So your characters, you know. Are they funny? Are they brave? Are they shy? Um, are they strong? Smart? How do they look? So their looks, how do they look? Okay. Um, and again, you just, just continually play around with it. Okay. Um, and I think, I think your characters is what makes your story work. Okay, if you can get characters that really relate um, to your reader, then your 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 story is going to be so much better. Okay, if, if have you ever read a book and not remembered the character in it, you understand. So your characters are quite big, but I say try and brainstorm who you want them to be. Okay, and I say are they happy? Are they sad? Are they shy? Cheeky? Funny? Are they a bit naughty? Their hobbies. What hobbies do they have? And again, remember, some of these you will write in your story. Some will never make it into your story, but they do shape who your character are. Uh, favorite TV program. All of these things. Favorite food, even. Um, you know, do they like school? Do they like school? Do they like holidays? Do they like traveling? Do they like their family? So, you know, what do they like? Okay, how did they get on with their mum and dad? You know, what's that relationship like? Does that change who they are? Do they have a best friend? Do they have a best friend? Okay, all of these things are going to help and shape your characters. And it doesn't matter what age they are, if they're children or if they're adults, all of these things are going to help, okay? So just jot them all down, get them on that piece of paper, because once they're on the paper, then you've already started to make them alive. You've already started to make them real, okay? And remember, you might not necessarily need all this, but um, it will help, okay? Next up, we've got how to start the story. Um, and this is, this is one that, again, um, sometimes we we can find really really difficult okay it's how to get the story started so um when it comes oh on this one um actually no i'll link it down in this section somewhere as well okay because it'll be important for here as well how do you start your story um when we stare at a blank page it puts our mind at high stress levels, okay? And it's what we call writer's block. So when you're staring at a blank page, you get so worked up and so hyped on how you get this perfect start to a story, okay? Um, i share some tips. Firstly, uh, professionals, sometimes they start a story by just trying to use a really short, okay? So short sentence, that's one option. So if you've got a really short, short, interesting sentence that doesn't give an awful lot away, okay? Um, that's how you get started. 
And then straight away, the reader will be like, what's happening? I want to keep reading and finding out. Secondly, if this isn't good for you, if you start to panic on the idea of a short sentence and you're like, oh, I can't get the perfect short sentence, don't worry about that either. Because the next one, and this is a really cool tip, again, this comes from the professionals. Imagine, right, you're about to write a story. When you're about to write it, you should have an idea of what the story is. You should have an idea of the characters, okay? So you already have this in your head. So when it comes to writing it, what you need to do is imagine you've just got home and you want to tell your mum, your sister, your best friend the news. Tell them what it is. Tell them this massive story that's just happened, okay? And just start writing it as if you're telling them, okay? So imagine you're telling the best news ever. You know, whenever you hear that little bit of gossip and you're like, I can't wait to tell somebody. And then straight away, you go, you find your best friend and you start telling them this gossip and you're just like, words are flying 100 miles an hour trying to tell them all this story, okay? So when it comes to writing your story, just imagine that what you have in your head is complete gold and you just want to get telling somebody. Just start because it's much easier to go back over work and start to tweak and change it once it's actually in paper. Once it's all in your head, it's very hard to tweak and improve it and make it better, okay? So once you get started, you can make it better. Until you get started, you can't make it better because it's all up in here, all right? So that one, I think, is a really key bit. Imagine what you have is the best news in the world and you want to tell somebody it really quickly. Write it down as if you're talking to somebody, okay? Throw it all down. And then once it's all done, you go back and you start to change it and you can make your little small edits and all that stuff on it, okay? So that's that one. And I'm trying to look for little notes that I made. Um, so on this one, um, yes, I have a, an example, okay? This one links in with our story and how to write the story, but also links to our character, okay, is... Show, not tell. And this is what I've done with you before. Okay, we've explained show, not tell many, many times. So remember, start with dark, then they went to the shops, then they got home, then they ate their sweets. Johnny likes, Johnny likes football. All of that, that's telling the reader everything. Show the reader examples and see which one is better okay george walked along the road with his mother he was feeling fed up and miserable he wanted a bar of chocolate but his mother said no george was cross okay so that's option number one option number two george trudged along the road scuffing the toes of his moaning about his spelling and handwriting again and we in the Chocolate whistle, Mum, asked George. No, of course not. You've already had one today, said Mum. George sighed and struck out his bottom lip. Okay, so straight away, which one of those do you think is more interesting? The second one, because it's showing the reader, and the reader then interprets all of those things. So um, we know that he's trudging his feet and scuffing the trainer. So what does that usually tell us about somebody? It usually tells us there's something on their mind, okay, that they're they're milling over something or they're they're a bit down in the dumps and they're definitely a bit annoyed about it. we're told a little bit about it um with the idea that in school things haven't been going too well but what's been happening in school um she does she, she uh in this one the second option we don't hear the word but we know something is happening in school okay he's had crisp stole and his chocolate bar stole all right but um so he's kind of being bullied, but we, we weren't told bullied, were we? We were showing the actions of what happens for somebody that is being bullied, okay? Um, so again, and again, when he's upset and cross, we're not told he's upset and he's cross. We're told he sticks his bottom lip out. So we know he's about sucking, selling, okay? So um, show, not tell, where you can, okay? What may happen on the very first go of your story, you may tell. You may tell it just to get it down, okay? 
But when you go back over, remember, make re-edits and re-edits. Once you make your re-edit, then you can go, oh, look, I've, I've told the reader something. How can I change that? How can I not tell them it, but show them it instead, okay? And again, we've got all these things like, you know, if somebody's really tall, don't say, um, don't say Dave was tall, you know. Dave, Dave who stood as he came in the doorways. Well, if he stoops as he comes in doorways, we know that Dave must be very tall, all right? So one idea is two is your characters, three, start your story, get it started, and you will not tell. The fourth one then is make something happen. The plot, make something happen. And this, um, this happens for any type of story, okay? Make something happen. This is your plot. So Jay, you're talking about your time in school, okay? See, to make your, your, your story interesting, make something happen in there, Jay. Make something really exciting happen. So it may be the best thing that happened, or it may have been like a problem that you thought you had, okay? But if you're doing a narrative story, guys, make something happen, okay? Think of that mountain wave, okay? At the top of it, something really big is happening, but you have to build up to it, okay? Then you overcome it and you work your way back down, all right? And it really doesn't matter. Just always think maybe little bits of conflict. Can you have a little bit of conflict in your story, a struggle with something? The struggle can be with a person or it can be with a thing. It can be with an emotion that they're struggling with, okay? Can you make something surprising happen? So you've got struggles. You get surprise, okay? You've got events, okay? Have a little think. Uh, that struggle, remember, the struggle can be with a person or an emotion that they're struggling with, all right? Um, that's your next one. So that's four, how to make, uh, make something happen, okay? And then number five, how to end the story. How to end the story. Um, interesting for you. Um, is that for this you kind of want to bring it to an end okay so you don't you're not wanting you can leave it on a cliffhanger and leave people wanting more that's fine um end the story usually you come to a nice little resolution that ends the story on a happy ending um but your stories can turn out surprising once you start writing them so don't get too hung up on how you're going to end it just get writing it and see what happens because sometimes you're when you get into the head of your character something totally unexpected happens and you end up writing something or creating an event for the story or the character that you didn't even think of at the beginning so when you're writing that story just let it let it go um but one thing is do not i want to put this in capitals because this is what happens a lot of times okay and it's usually because we only have 40 minutes to write it you've got much longer this week okay do not rush the ending don't be like, oh, I'm so close to the ending. I just want this done. And then next thing is you've really built up slow tension into the key point. You've unfolded the key point. And next thing is you just come rocketing off to the end of the story. They all live happily ever, ever after. Done. Smooth it out. So that line goes all the way up, comes down in a nice smooth arc. We don't want coming up and then just dropping straight off to the end. No good. Okay. Um, so on there, bring it to a nice resolution. Or if you want, on a nice resolution, what you could do is almost, almost start to weave in something that looks like the story is about to take off again, okay? Because if you leave it as it looks like something's about to take off again, and then just cut it there, what have you done? You've made the reader want more, okay? They want more, and if they want more, they're going to classify your story as good. Okay, because they want more off it. Alrighty. So that's your last piece. So ideas. Get your characters. Get your story. Just get it started. Whiz the ideas down. You go. I would love it if you could do like two, three, four redrafts of the story where you think it's finished. I can check it. Then you go back. Then you change it. You look for better words and you look for this show not tell idea. Okay. I think guys, if you finish all of those, you're gonna end up with a really awesome story. All right, and as I said, what the story can be, you choose, let your imagination uh, run wild with you. All righty, um, so hopefully that has helped for that, okay? Uh, it doesn't have to be about school or memories, 
Um, it can be any single story that you want. It doesn't have to be about school or about memories. If you want to do it, fantastic. If you want to make it school themed ish, like you know, two girls on a playground, by all means, go for it. Um, you decide what you want. Okay. Um, it can literally just be your best piece of narrative story if you want. All right. Um, I said, if you have done a story in the past and you thought, oh, that kind of works well, um, then you can start and go for it. All right. So it can be any single story that you want. Your timetable is out. There's loads of options to get right in it. Once you've written a draft off it, what I would suggest you do is copy it and put it in as a comment. If you put it in as a comment to Google Classroom, I can get on and check it. Okay, and then I might make some tweaks or highlight some parts of it where I think you could maybe manage it better, and then I'll I'll reply to your comment with it. All right, so that sounds fair. So if you can get it all done, put it on there, and then I can I can tweak it. Um, I need to send these off to the publisher on Friday afternoon. They must go Friday, otherwise we won't get them back by end of June. All right. So you have all week. To make these as best you possibly can. I would say don't hum and have but the start off. I'll just give you a great tip on how you just get started a story. All right. Um, but as always, guys, put time into your planning. Really put time into that plan because without that plan and you go and write, you're writing with no direction. Okay. Whereas if you just spend 10 minutes, really bash as many keywords and ideas out on a piece of paper then you have direction in your head as you're right and you know where that story is going to move and rise and fall at and it makes it so much easier and so much better whereas if you just start blindly you have no idea whether you're actually making something exciting or whether you're just writing words that aren't doing anything for your reader okay so get them all done and say once you have a first draft done put it up onto google classroom as a comment i'll have a look at it all righty um there will be a picture as well if you want. You don't have to, but you do have the option of putting a picture in within that two-page limit, all right? Um, and that's why it's important not to put your size of your writing massive because then you'll have no room for a picture. Um, and if you don't want a picture, that's fine. You don't need to. Um, but as I say, there's loads of people in the class that might like an idea of being an illustrator, Um bit of practice for the future and they might enjoy drawing a picture based on your story so they might read your story uh, over see what your character is and then they might try and draw something really cool for them um, I'm also looking I'm thinking maybe either Cleo Fay or Anish might enjoy drawing a front cover maybe for us as well so I'll message them and see do they fancy doing that for me um, so that's it guys uh, really quickly with the maths Someone said they didn't understand it, Josh, or something. This math booklet, uh, the first like four or five pages are just revision. They're just telling you how to do all of those styles of multiplying and dividing. Okay. What I would do is I would read the first one and then flick a couple of pages and then you'll get the first set of like four questions. And those four questions should match up with like the first piece of revision instruction. Okay, so the booklet split into two. The first half of it is theory, where it's telling you how to do the stuff. And then the second half of the booklet is actually questions. And the questions I would literally just do maybe three or four a day. Uh, if you have it all finished by Thursday, um, I'll put up another one on Thursday as well to help you. Um, and it'll be based on long multiplication and long division. All righty. So um, that said, let's. Um, that's pretty much as much as I have time for. Um, so, or well, no, I'll get you warmed up for maths before we go, okay? So we get warmed up for maths before we go. So if you have a whiteboard, um, if you have a whiteboard, we'll get ready. We'll, we'll just run through how high can you go, how low can you go, and then, then you can be fine to whiz on, start your maths, and then, or if you're desperate, get started straight into that story. Let me know how you're getting on. And as always, I'll be on Google Classroom if you do need me. Alrighty. Um, so I said, I've got one or two minutes and we'll try to get ourselves warmed up if you have a whiteboard ready. Okay, so zero top left. We'll play in sixes. We'll play our six times tables. Ready, set, and go. Stop. 
stop. Let's double check our numbers. We should have had 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 66, and 72. Okay, ready? Rub them out, try again, zero top left. Ready, set, and go. And stop, double check, should have had 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 66, and 72. Ready? What goes up, whoosh, must come down. Put 72 top left, 72 top left, ready, set, go. Stop. Double check our numbers. You should have had 72, 66, 60, 54, 48, 42, 36, 30, 24, 18, 12, 6, 0. Ready? I'll try one more time. Ready? 72, top left. Ready? Set. And go. And stop. Double check our numbers. We should have had 72, 6, 60, 54, 48, 42, 36, 30, 24, 18, 12, 6, and 0. Okay. Really well done, guys. As always, thanks for getting on. Let the others know. Um, I've seen there's about 9 or 10 of us on here. So do message the other ones. Let them know that if they're struggling with the story that hopefully you find today helpful and that you managed um, to get a bit more understanding from the video. Um, you can message them and say if they watch it, they should hopefully have a better idea of what's going on. I think it's easier to watch a video for instructions than to try and read my typing on Google Classroom, okay? So as I said, you have a maximum of two pages. Um, it is a story, I would love it. If it's size 12, there is, if you keep your font size, the size 12 on a computer, you should be able to write one full page and have another page for a drawing easily, okay? Um, easily, so I would say, but I would, I would like for sixth class, really we're trying to get one, one page, you have two to play around with, um, but I, I think we're all capable of getting at least a page done. Alrighty, well done guys as always, and as I said, we'll see you in Google Classroom and we may go to, we may try to do a Zoom tomorrow just to bounce ideas off each other and see how we're getting on with the stories. Alrighty, so we'll maybe pencil that in for tomorrow. I have a staff meeting later, so we'll do a Zoom tomorrow and we can bounce some ideas off each other. Alrighty, bye-bye.